Hello everybody, Louis here and let's talk C Sharp. So this will be a very exciting video. And the reason for that is because we'll start talking about loops. What are loops? What are iterations? What's all that? What are fours, uh, for statements? What are while statements? Do while statements. So we're going to talk about all that. Uh, this video, however, we're going to focus on do while loops. Okay. And that's what we'll begin our lesson with. So first of all, what are loops? So loops are mechanisms that you can use in almost any programming language or maybe any programming language. I don't know about the older ones um, because they do operate in kind of a different mechanism. So in terms of syntax is a little more complex. Um, but I can say that in more modern programming languages, uh, you have this mechanism called loops or loop statements. There are three of them. Do while, while, and for. And good programming languages will also have a for each. Okay. So essentially, it will will cover. All of them we'll talk about all of them in separate videos however so the first one let's talk about the do while okay and the first question I guess that we have to answer is what is an iteration so I can say that an iteration is uh, you know when you go over and over uh, on the same code block um, if you are a more experienced programmer, you kind of know what I'm talking about. If you had, maybe, maybe you have programming in, in high school or something like that. So you know that sometimes you just want to repeat a piece of code for a number of times, right? And that's what an iteration is. So that's, that's when you cycle over the same thing for a number of times, okay? So iteration or Iterating is the process of repeating something for a number of times. Okay, that's what iterate, iterating is. Uh, and iteration is every single time you do that, essentially. I'm just putting it in very simple terms, very simple English, um, non-technical or anything like that, because I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay, so... How to do while statements work? In English, it actually already tells you. So essentially the way it works is the premise is you're gonna do something while a condition is true, okay? That's all there is. What is the syntax in C-sharp? You're gonna throw in the do keyword Throw in your curly braces, the while keyword then. In here, we're going to have a condition, and that's it. So what is this condition here? Well, essentially, I know that by this point, you already know what if statements are. If you don't, you have to go back a couple of videos and make sure you are up to speed on that. Otherwise you are familiar with if statements and you know that if statements operate based off of conditions and the same conditions you would have in an if statement you would have here as well so the same kind right so how does this thing work so let me try an example here let's say we want to display all numbers from 0 to 10 Okay, so that's what I want to do. So first of all, first thing that I want to do is maybe I want to create a variable number. It has to be an integer. Okay, and maybe this number should start at zero because I want to display all numbers from zero to 10. Okay, so if I don't want to use loops, what I have to do is just come up with a bunch of console.writeLine statements, 
Okay, but that takes a long time, especially if I want to work with millions of records in a database or something like that, which would be a typical uh, um, application. Uh, so this would take a long time and this is not effective. So what I want to do instead is I want to use loops. So if I want to use the do while loop for that, what I have to do is, there we go, I already have my variable. And what is, I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to have some code here. Okay. So what is the condition here? What condition should I have here? Hmm. So this is where, when it gets tricky. So I'm going to show you a few things. Okay. So let's start by saying that my condition will be number less than 10. Okay. And I know that I'm going to have some code here. All right. And let's say that my code will be console right line number. All right. So you would think that, you know, maybe this is good enough. So let's run it. Now, the problem that I get if I run this code is that I get an infinite loop. Okay. And what an infinite loop is, um, is essentially a loop that never ends. So the program will keep running and running and running forever or for as long as I let it. Right. So I'm going to close it. How can we fix that? That's the first, um, uh, the first question. So we can see that the number variable starts at zero and I'm going to keep running this single line of code could be multiple times, multiple lines, by the way. Um, and we're going to talk about that shortly. Um, so I have my number variable. I'm going to, I'm running this code for a number of times and I'm going to run it while number is less than 10. Well, if I don't change this variable, the number will always be less than 10, right? So I have to fix that. How do I fix that? I can increment this variable. So I can, there are a couple of ways I can do it. So I can do say number equals number plus one, which is fine. This works. That's not a problem, but there's a better way. Well, again, I don't know if it's a better way. I know it's a faster way. I don't know what, by what criteria I would have to, uh, I would have, I would have to adhere to in order to de define that the second method is actually better than the first. Uh, what I'm saying is that this method is better. I can just say number plus plus. And for me, it's better because it's faster. And that's the only criteria I'm taking into account. So now what I'm doing is essentially these two statements are the same. Okay. So same as above. Okay. And what I mean by that is that number plus plus is the same thing as number equals number plus one. Okay. So they are the same, the same thing. They produce the exact same output. You can use them interchangeably. You are allowed to use them interchangeably if you want to. Okay. I'm just saying that number plus plus is faster. So if I run this code now, look at what I get. I get all numbers from zero to, oops, to nine, not 10. And why is that? Let's take a look at the code. So the number starts at zero. Okay. And then this, the do while is a post processed loop. And what that means is that it's only going to check for this condition here after running the code for the first time. Okay. Other loops, they work very differently, but we're going to talk about them in another video. All we have to know for this one is that do while loops are post processed loops. Okay. And what that means is that they check for their condition after running the code the first time. Okay. So because that's the case, what I'm doing is I'm starting my number at zero. I'm running this code for the first time. So number is equal to zero and then I'll increment the number by one. So zero becomes one. And then I look at this condition here. So is one less than 10? 
The answer is yes, this is a true statement. So I'm going to run this again. I'm going to go back to line 11 and execute this code again. So the one is displayed on the screen. That's how we see the number one here. Okay. And after it's displayed to the screen, it's incremented by one. So the one becomes two. And then we check again, is two less than 10? That is a true statement. So let's go back to line 11 and run this code again. And we're going to keep doing that until we get to number nine. So if number is equal to nine, we're going to display it. And then we're going to increment nine by one. So it becomes 10. And let me check again my condition here. Is 10 less, this, less than 10? No. 10 is not less than 10. 10 is equal to 10. Okay. So that being the case, what I can do is actually throw in a less than or equal to statement and run this code again. And now I get the output that I'm looking for. I'm displaying all numbers starting at zero, ending at 10. Okay, and this is how it works. Something that you have to be very careful about do while or while statements is that the place in your code in which you are increasing or incrementing your variable actually matters. Okay, and what I mean by that is that if I get this statement right here, number plus plus, and throw it at the top of my uh, do block and run this again, I'm going to get a whole different output. Look at that. The output I'm getting here is from 1 to 11, which is not what I'm looking for. Okay, and the reason for that is because my number starts at zero, I increment my number by one right off the bat. Okay, so by the time I get to my very first console right line statement, it's already one. So that's why you'll never see the zero. And then it goes all the way up to 10. Uh, and what happens is that I increase my 10 in one, I increment it by one. Okay, so my 10 becomes 11. And I display 11. And only then I check if 11 is less than or equal to 10, which is false. That's not the case. And that's why I break out of this loop and carry on with the rest of the code. Okay. In this case, I don't have any rest of the code, but I would if I did. Okay. So you have to be very careful about this because the place where you increment your variables actually matter. And, you know, depending on the, the, the problem you're trying to solve, you may have to increment it first. Uh, based on my experience, for the most part, uh, incrementing the number will, in most cases, be the last thing you want to do in your do block. Okay? It's going to be the last thing. Again, and this is very important because I'm not saying that this is the correct way to do it 100% of the times. What I'm saying is that based on my experience, in most situations, this is what you want to do. There are situations, however, where that is not the case. Okay. Um, another thing that I have to say is that in the do statement, in the do block, any piece of code can come here. Okay, so if you want to throw in if statements, you can. If you want to throw in switch statements, that's allowed too. Uh, if you want to do another loop inside the loop, you can do that as many times as you want. Okay, there are no restrictions. Um, so let's let's try an example here. Um, I'm gonna keep it there, but what I want to do instead is I want to display all even numbers from zero to ten. Okay. So I can throw in an if statement and we already know how to detect if a number is even or odd. I have to do number modulus two equals equals zero. Okay, and if I do that and throw that piece of code in here, I have to fix my indentation because good code is beautiful code. So let's run this code. Let's see, let's see if we get the output we're looking for. 
look at that it appears that we don't and why is that because there's something very wrong with this code I don't want to just increment the number if the number variable is even right I want to increment it regardless okay and why is that that's because I'm counting from 0 to 10 right and I and I want to keep my counting going normally. The, th the only thing is that I only want to displace something if my number variable has an even number. So let's run this again. All right, and I get to the numbers 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, which is good. That's kind of the answer I'm looking for. If I want to make it 100, can run this again and that's when loops start to become very useful because I don't want to do all this by hand okay and there we go I got my requirements right I got an answer uh, the only thing that I have to be careful is when tackling a real-life problem maybe for your test maybe in the workplace I have to pay three times more attention to details all right and in this case the details is uh, that the detail I'm talking about is the boundaries right so do I really want to start at zero and do I really I really want to end at 10 so if you read this sentence display all even numbers from zero to 10 so that implies that the 10 is included and the zero is included okay so if my problem was something like display all numbers between 0 and 10, I don't think this would be a valid approach anymore because numbers between 0 and 10 do not necessarily include the 0 and the 10 or the 100. Okay, so for me, my brain, as I read this sentence, I understand that I want to display all even numbers between 0 and 100, meaning numbers that start at 1 and end at 99, right? A subset of numbers that includes numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 99, but it ex excludes 0 and 100, okay? So it is very important that you pay three times more attention to this kind of thing because it matters it changes the output okay so now that we know how to do this we can actually mix arrays and loops so let's try something here this will be fun let's say that I have an array here it'll be a string array in which I have the days of the week, right? And I know that the days of the week are Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and finally, Saturday. Okay, so these are my days of the week. Okay, so something you may have noticed, and if you don't, I'm telling you this right now. If you want to do a console right line and just go ahead and say days and run this code, you will not display your array. You're not really displaying the array. Okay, you're just displaying gibberish. I mean, it's not really gibberish. There's actually a meaning behind it. Um, but you're not seeing the actual values that are stored inside that array. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so that's not the case. This does not work. And this is very important. I'm going to say that statement one more time. Console.WriteLine statements cannot be used to directly display the values inside an array. It will not work if you just grab your array and throw it in as a parameter, just like I'm doing here. This will not work, okay? So now that you know that, 
I'm also gonna tell you that you can use your do while to display that array for you. Okay, so what is it that you're gonna do? Well, we know we're gonna have some code here and we know we're gonna have some condition here. So let's start with the code. Code will be easy. I'll just say console write line day and I know how I can access specific elements inside that array. Now, what should go in here? That's tricky. That's tricky. Um, if you already know the answer to this, congrats. If you don't, here's the answer. You actually have to create a control variable. Um, you can call that index. You can call it counter. The name you give to it doesn't matter. As long as it's an integer, I'm going to call it index. You can call it counter, counter if you want or any other thing. As long as it's a meaningful name, that's a good variable name. And I'm going to start this at zero because arrays are zero based. So, and now what I can do is just throwing my indexing there. Okay. So let's think about this for a moment here. What's going on? Well, I have my days and they're all here. I know they are indexed and I know they are zero based. Okay. So my index variable starts at zero. But if I just hard code the zero in there, my code will only and always display Sunday because that's the first one. So that's not what I want to do. I want to create something dynamic. So because it's dynamic, the index has to be a variable and it's a variable because it changes. Okay. So my variable here starts at zero. What do I have to do next? I can do index plus plus. Look at that. And it actually works. All right. And we're going to see that it works very soon. We still have to take care of the condition. And what is my condition here? I know it will have to have something to do with the index. So maybe index is less than seven because I have seven days in the week and I know that. Um, does this work? Hmm. Let's see. So let me run this code. And look at that. This actually works. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'm getting all my weeks, all, all my days, all my elements inside the days array, which is exactly what I'm looking for. That is, however, what, again, I consider to be a better solution. I don't want to have this number hard coded in here because there is a property that all arrays have that I can leverage to make this a better solution or a better code overall. That is days dot length. And I, I'm using the dots because I want to access a property from that object. Okay. So, so far we have used dot. If you wanted to call, say, a method, something like the two upper, two lower contains, something like that. Um, but you can actually use the dot to access properties that object has and arrays have a property called length and if you hover your mouse over the length property you can read the description and it says gets the total number of elements in all the dimensions of the array okay so essentially that's going to give me seven because the length of this array is seven is the same as the size okay so if i run this I get the output I'm looking for, which is great. And this is the kind of situation where you want to increment your number in the last line in your do block, because if you change the order and do it first, you're going to get the wrong output. Okay. First of all, the code will, the, the output will start with Monday and after Saturday, you will actually get an exception and you get this exception because the code tries to access a position that does not exist in your array. It's trying to access uh, index number seven. And as you know, the last index 
in my days array is actually six. Okay, so I have to be very careful about these things. All right, so this is actually the output I'm looking for, which is great. Look at that. Beautiful. So we are going to talk about other loops, um, but not in this video. I want to keep this short. So this is all there is to know about do while statements. Uh, I hope this makes sense, and I'll see you all next week. Cheers.